Welcome to Module 36 in this series of lectures on statistical quality assurance and statistical process improvement. We've come to the part of these lectures where we're going to talk about process capability analysis. The framework that we've adopted in this set of lectures is this six-step process-oriented quality assurance cycle of Vardaman and Job. And we've come in our discussion of this to uh, just talked about assessing and working towards process stability. Uh, once one brings a process to the point that its pattern of variation is consistent, that is, it is stable to within uh, basic baseline natural variation, then it makes sense to try to characterize it. Until you bring a process to consistency, uh, you could almost argue you don't have a process. Uh, but uh, once it's brought to uh, a stable pattern of variation, then uh, one can talk about characterizing that performance. And that's the, uh, this is step number five. And we're going to speak in this lecture about st statistical graph graphics for process characterization. And then in the next couple of uh, lectures about measures of process capability, uh, their estimation, uh, and probabilistic tolerancing and propagation of error. So we're going to speak now about normal plotting. Uh, normal plots are made using so-called quantiles. Uh, a quantile for a data set is uh, a is, is another word for a percentile. So if I talk about the 0.95 quantile, I'm talking about the 95th percentile. The 0.8 quantile, I'm talking about the uh, 80th percentile. Uh, one can talk about quantiles of data sets. Uh, so I could talk about uh, scoring at the 80th percentile of the 0.8 quantile on a standardized exam. And that would mean that I, uh, in the data set of people that have taken the exam, uh, I beat 80% of them. Uh, you can also talk about quantiles of theoretical distributions, like the normal, the standard normal distribution. 5% uh, of a standard normal distribution is above 1.645, so you could call 1.645, the 0.95 quantile of that uh, distribution. We're going to use notation Q of P to stand for the quantile of any distribution. Uh, we need some kind of a convention for uh, talking about quantiles of a of a data set. Uh, exactly, if I if I only have 10 10 data values. Uh, Exactly what do I mean by the uh, 83rd percentile of that uh, distribution? That's not quite so obvious. Uh, and here's the convention that we're going to adopt. We're going to say that if I have uh, some data values that I put in order, uh, smallest to largest, and I grab uh, one of those, then I'm going to uh, say that that order data value is the i minus 0.5 over n uh, quantile of the data set. So if I have, for example, 10 values, I put them in order uh, smallest to largest. If I grab the third, so i is 3, uh, i minus 0.5 over n is 3 minus 0.5 over 10. We're going to call that the uh, 0.25 quantile of the data set. Uh, what's a normal plot? Well, a normal plot is a plot of ordered pairs where one plots data quantiles as one coordinate and uh, standard normal quantiles as the other coordinate. Uh, you could think, again, about putting the data points in uh, order. And so you have the ordered, an ith ordered data value uh, versus uh, the i minus 0.5 quantile of, of uh, 
I minus 0.5 over n quantile of the standard normal distribution. Uh, quantiles for a standard normal distribution, we're talking about z values. Uh, you find uh, standard normal quantiles by uh, using a standard normal table. Uh, find a cumulative probability of uh, 0.55. You go to the body of the table, that z value is the uh, 0.55 quantile of a standard normal. Uh, you can get standard normal quantiles from statistical package packages, uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, most statistical packages will just automatically make uh, a normal plot for you without having to go through the uh, uh, the making making one up of your by your uh, by yourself by uh, making the ordered pairs. Uh, what is a standard? What's a normal plot good for? Well, uh, one makes a comparison of data quantiles and standard normal ones, looking for a straight line. If one has a straight line on the normal plot, that suggests that the process that stands behind the uh, data generating mechanism in the long run will make uh, observations that are normal looking. Uh, here, uh, and, and, nor and normal plotting is, is useful uh, for a couple of, a couple of reasons. Uh, here is a normal plot uh, of 20 uh, tongue thickness measurements on some steel levers. Uh, on this axis is data quantile. On this axis is z values for the corresponding i minus 0.5 over n values. Uh, the actual, what, what's printed here is, is cumulative probability so that the the, the plot doesn't plot it, it's it's its appearance doesn't have z values but rather rather cumul cumulative probabilities and the idea is that if I look at this plot and see a fairly straight line uh, then that says I've got a distribution that's bell shaped uh, the tongue thickness values are bell-shaped or normal. Uh, this particular plot has that value that is uh, not on line with the rest of them to some to some extent. I'd, I'd have to take that guy and move him to the left uh, in order to get him on line with the uh, other variable with the other values. What that says is that this value is too big to have come from uh, a normal distribution uh, described by the rest of the of the data. Uh, one has uh, not a, a normal shape, but rather a shape that has a long tail uh, to the right side. Now, knowing that kind of thing is important. Uh, it it helps one judge uh, whether or not to put one's faith in normal distribution calculations. Uh, and in those cases where the plot is not a straight line, uh, it gives some idea as to uh, in what ways it is not normal and how that might affect uh, calculations. That is, if I had this kind of a picture and I treated those data as if they were, uh, I treated that mechanism as if it was uh, going to produce normally distributed observations, uh, it in fact would probably tend to produce uh, occasional outliers, occasional very large values um, more often than my normal calculations would uh, would suggest. Uh, another reason, another way that 
normal plotting uh, used to be important. Uh, I say used to be because uh, there's much less of this done uh, these days than there used to be uh, because these plots are uh, not typically made on normal probability paper anymore. They're made, made uh, by statistical packages. Uh, but these, the, the slope of this line, the bigger the slope, the smaller the standard deviation. And where this curve goes through the 50% point or the z equal to 0 point, uh, that gives you a good idea of what is the what is the mean value of that distribution, at least if it's a if it's a mostly straight line picture. So the point would be that you, you can read uh, some information off of a normal plot uh, in terms of what are the parameters of the nor of the normal distribution. Uh, another reason or another way that normal plotting uh, has been used is to say, well, if I took, say, the z value of 3 up here, z value of minus 3 down here, and saw how that corresponded to uh, values in the uh, data set, uh, that would tell me about what a Six sigma spread in the uh, in the in the measured values uh, corresponds to. So uh, it 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 used to be common to use so-called capability analyses, uh, capability analysis sheets that are essentially pieces of normal probability paper, uh, plotting data this way. Uh, cumulative normal this way, uh, the spread of the data from here uh, to there, where this is a z value of 3 and that's a z value of minus 3, uh, would correspond to this This distance would be a, uh, a, a capability of the process in, in terms of being a measure of about six standard deviations.